Hello, Anthony Fasano here from Pass the PE Exam. I get so many questions from viewers asking for advice on how to write their professional experience in an acceptable manner when applying to sit for the PE exam. In this video, I will provide you with some general guidelines on how you can write your professional experience history in a way that is acceptable to your licensing state board to help you qualify for licensure. This episode is brought to you by PPI, a leader in engineering exam prep for the FE and PE exams since 1975. PPI provides expert prep courses and study resources designed to help you pass the PE exam the first time. PPI's live online courses include hours of lectures, problem solving demonstrations, exam strategy sessions, office hours, and a passing guarantee. When you take a live online course, PPI guarantees you will pass or you can take the on-demand course for free. With study guides, practice exams, and more, the PPI Learning Hub offers digital practice and review that you can take with you anywhere you have a device so that you can prepare during the times most convenient for you. Check out PPI today at ppi2pass.com to see all the options available for PE exam prep. Let's dive in. To be licensed as a professional engineer in any U.S. state, you must submit an application for licensure to the Office of Professions in your state. However, it is very important to do so in a professional manner and follow some very important guidelines. Now, since I submitted my application and have my license in New York State, I will speak to how the process worked for me in New York. However, I believe this information will be helpful to engineers in most U.S. states. But I do recommend that you ask for guidance from other engineers that you know in your state that have had their applications accepted in the past. There's no better way to do it than to use one that got accepted. Now, in New York, the documentation consists of two parts. Your own statement of what you have done and verification by your supervisor or supervisors of the nature and extent of your experience. Contact information for persons who can verify the experience, such as a supervisor, is required. Most state boards will provide forms for the candidate and the supervisor, if applicable, to use in documenting your experience, which is why you always have to remember who your supervisors were. Now, it is not unusual for experience to be disqualified because the experience has not been described in a way that could be evaluated by the board of examiners. Therefore, particularly with regard to describing internship experience, it is both important that you and your supervisor, if required, use the terminology and verbiage that will make it easy for your state board to understand your engineering related experience. Before filling in the portion of the application forms pertaining to experience, write a rough draft of what you want to say. Then review that draft for any points that are not clear or any weak points. If possible, have someone who has experience and familiarity with the licensure process review it as well, preferably again someone who has had an application approved in the past. The following is a list of five common mistakes candidates for engineering licensure make in attempting to document their experience. Number one, job titles aren't enough. No matter how impressive a job title may sound, it should be accompanied by a detailed description of your duties and responsibilities in that role. This description must make the nature and extent of your engineering experience involved in that role very clear. Number two, avoid vague generalities and ambiguous phrases. I was involved in, I worked on, I was engaged in, and other similar phrases are uninformative unless they are followed by a specific description of duties. Instead, use specific terms such as, I designed, I reviewed, I recommended, and similar phrases. For example, I worked on the design of a cooling system for XYZ factory does not tell the engineering board whether you worked as a designer, draftsperson, print coordinator, or something else entirely, or whether you did different jobs at different times during the project. Other vague phrases include, I was responsible for, I had full responsibility for, or I was part of a team that. 
it is much more useful to specify your duties precisely. Number three, avoid vague formulations regarding the amount of time you have spent performing each type of work. If you spent only a part of your time on a particular duty, indicate the percentage of your time that was devoted to that task. If you worked on a particular task on a full-time intermittent basis, indicate the number of weeks or months that you spent on that project. For example, if a project took two years, but you did different tasks in year one versus year two, detail them in the timeline. Number four, try not to hide deficiencies in your experience through the use of vague general language. Believe me, it's better to wait to apply for the exam once your experience is sufficient to qualify. If it's unclear to the reviewing party, they will likely not accept that experience or ask for clarification, which believe me, can delay the application process by months or years. Number five, the application form is not a place for modesty. Do not assume that the full range of your duties or the full extent of your responsibility will be obvious from the job title or your brief summary. Failure to explain fully can lead to rejection. Go into detail, making sure that you give yourself credit for all that you have actually done. Be honest. You may be surprised to find that a single job may encompass a number of engineering functions requiring many professional judgments. You should point out each of these functions and mention the judgments that you had to make, giving examples of some of the main themes of that project. In considering your application, an engineering licensure board must come to a decision as to whether your education and experience qualify for licensure. This means that the evaluation committee must be able to understand, evaluate, and verify the facts as you present them. A specific detailed summary of your experience written in clear, forceful language will greatly increase your chances of qualifying for the principles and practice of engineering examination or the PE exam. And remember to contact your applicable licensure board to obtain specific experience and reporting requirements and to obtain forms for reporting your experience. Remember, every state is a little bit different. I hope you found this week's video helpful. In upcoming videos, I will solve some more PE exam practice problems and answer other questions from our subscribers. Past the PE exam videos will be published weekly, so please be sure to click that subscribe button so you don't miss something that could make a substantial difference in your exam result. And please, Ask questions and leave comments below this video and I will read and respond to them. Maybe there's a specific topic that you need help with or a problem that you need solved. Pass the PE exam, we'll have you covered. I'll see you next week on Pass the PE exam.